Uh, I wanted to ask a question about my personal perspective. That, uh, like, what is your why that keeps you going, and uh, is there a goal that you are actually reaching for doing this here today? Ah, that's a great question. Um, what drives me? When I got involved in this technology, I felt a moment of pure excitement and possibility. And the reason I felt that pure excitement and possibility is because I'm a nerd. And nerds get excited by technology. Like normal people, they don't go, this is the most elegant programming I've ever seen. No. I do. I'm like, oh, this is so amazing. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting emotional because this code is so elegant. I do that. Which is why a lot of the people who got involved in this early on were nerds. It, it takes a certain personality. It's happened to me many times in my life. I got really excited, but here's the interesting thing. Once I got into it and I started understanding, it kept giving me new reasons to be excited. And then I started meeting people. And I'd go to a meeting and I'd go, man, the first time I I found out about Bitcoin when I read the white paper. It blew my mind and it changed my life. And I didn't eat for weeks. And I got so obsessed. And I spent all day on the internet. And the people around me started complaining because I wasn't doing anything else, you know, like communicating with my friends and family, you know, on one extreme or showering on the other extreme. Right? So at, at that point, people around you are like, "There's something really wrong with you," and you're like, "No, no." It's beautiful. Let me tell you about Bitcoin. Like, please don't, <laughs> right? And then I meet people at the meetups, and they're like, "That's exactly what happened to me. That's what happened to me. I became so amazed at this technology, and then I started seeing how I could apply it in my life and how it could improve the world. And then I started telling everybody I could meet until they they started telling me to shut up about." Bitcoin, and then I discovered this other thing, and then I learned something more. How many people here have experienced that? Yeah? Every time I go to one of these meetings, I meet people who tell me their personal story. and That personal story reminds me exactly why I got involved. And so you can go on Twitter, and you can go on Reddit, and you can look at what's happening in the world of Bitcoin. And there's so much drama and bullshit and negative emotion, and people are on this roller coaster of emotion. But if you come to one of these community meetings, you connect with people who have the exact same reason that you got involved, and with whom you have this sense of community. Now, I understand that what I just described applies equally well to a cult, right? <laughs> and of course, many of the people you meet at first, they're like, uh, you sound like you joined a cult. You've, you've been chanting the white paper in the voice of Satoshi Nakamoto <laughs> for the past three days. And that could be a bit going a bit too far. So if you find yourself in your living room at two o'clock in the morning going, a system of electronic cash, peer-to-peer -peer networking, then you've gone too far. But you can find a lot of people who enjoy the same things as you. What is my goal? My goal, which I communicate with everybody I work with, that everybody who works for me understands, which everybody is working towards, is very simple. Educate as many people as possible, in as many languages as possible, on the technology of open blockchains. That is it. Educate as many people, many languages, open blockchains. Four things. Really, really simple. I've been working on that nonstop for the past four years with just complete determination. We're now translating the videos into 37 languages with the help of volunteers. Public free education. If you look at the number of people that have watched the videos that I do, I think we've already reached a million people who have been educated completely for free on the technology of open blockchain. And there are thousands of people around the world who support me on this and feel part of that mission and even give me money every month so that I can pay my staff so I can do it bigger. And this is my goal. For the next four years, I want to take that from one million people to fifty million people over four years in more languages, 
in more countries and with more free and open education. And that sounds crazy. But to me, that is a much more achievable goal than paying attention to what the Bitcoin price is going to do. Because I think there are at least 50 million people who we can tell about this amazing technology over the next four years, who will understand it, who will need it in their life, who will be interested in learning about it. And some of them will be nerds like me, and will just be excited to see something elegant. And if you believe in that mission, I would invite you to help me achieve it. What does that mean? Everybody has something to give. You're not a programmer, doesn't matter. Can you speak two languages or three languages? You can help me translate. Can you talk to your friends and family? Can you um, buy a book or download one of my free books, print it out, and put it in your local school or library or university? Could you go and teach? at your local school or college, a simple introductory course using the materials that we have freely available? Could you introduce it into your local community? Could you teach young children how to learn about this technology so they have a new career or opportunity? All of those things are possible. Whether you are a creative artist, a software engineer, a business person, an accountant, no matter what you do, some of the biggest proponents of this technology are taxi drivers. And they go around all day picking up different people and telling them, have you heard about Bitcoin? <laughs> Sometimes I meet them. It's amazing. All right, thank you. That was a great question. I want to ask you, uh, you're an investor, an activist, but I'm a technician of blockchain. That's a great question. I'm a teacher. I'm not an investor. Um, I personally own Bitcoin because I need it for my work and I use it in my business. I don't know if I'm an activist. I think I'd have to be more active to be an activist. Um, and I think mostly I would describe myself as a teacher. It's what I love to do. That moment where you are explaining something to someone and you see the light bulb go off. I live for that. That's what I love doing. Um, and so I'm a teacher. Um, and like in any other industry, the teachers are the least paid professionals in the space. <laughs> if I was an investor, I'd be much more successful, and you know, I would have landed on the roof of this building in my private helicopter. But I'm a teacher, so instead, you know, I take the bus. <laughs> Thank you.